extremely important and something that we're learning a lot today too. Pam, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. As we've learned, solar eclipses are very important to learn for many, many reasons. We have radio telescope operators who are studying the eclipse today for this very reason. Let's take a look at that work. When the moon blocks the sun during a solar eclipse, there is a noticeable impact on Earth's upper atmosphere, known as the ionosphere. These changes can affect radio communications, including amateur radio, also known as ham radio. Ham radio is a way you can talk to people all around the world. You set up a radio and an antenna. You talk into the radio, the radio sends a signal up to the antenna, the antenna sends a signal up to the sky, it bounces off of the electrified layer of the sky back down to Earth where you can talk to the person on the other side. During the 2024 total solar eclipse, the HAMSI Citizen Science Project is inviting ham radio operators to transmit radio signals. The goal is to have people make as many radio contacts as they can with operators in different locations during the celestial event. By recording how strong their radio signals are and how far they go, ham radio operators and scientists can learn about how the ionosphere changes during solar eclipses. Sometimes you can talk around the world and sometimes you can't. And that's all based on what the ionosphere is doing, what the sun is doing. When it works and you are able to talk to these faraway places, I find that really magical. To learn how you can participate, follow Do NASA Science on X and Facebook. And we are minutes away from the total solar eclipse <laughs> over Kerrville, Texas. The temperature is dropping. As you can see, I have to throw on a jacket. The sky is dimming. We're on the edge of our seats. And we are joined now with astronaut and commander of the Artemis II mission to the moon, Reed Wiseman. Reed, it's an honor to have you here. Thank you. The crowd noise, like right. the fact that the sun is behind the clouds most of the time and peeking out. This is, it's so yes, wonderful. It's I know. True. Thanks for being here, Reed. You can As you can that. hear, like, we are. Ready we are right there. Is exciting. <laughs> so tell us, Reed, you know, obviously everybody is excited, but have you seen a total solar eclipse before? Never a total, so I will share this darkness oh, with you same. and this whole crowd the first time. Oh wow, God. this yeah. is yeah. incredible. That's so, too, you know, what considerations do you and your fellow Artemis astronauts need to think about when related to the sun when traveling back to the moon? Well, it's great to see uh, Pam Melroy on your last clip, uh, a dear friend of mine, so it was nice to see Pam's face over there. But when we're heading out to the sun, it's really radiation is our big mm. thing that we're, th I'm sorry, as we're heading out to the moon, yeah. it's really <laughs> the, the solar sun. radiation yeah. that we're most thinking about there as the danger from from the sun and the Apollo astronauts dealt with it and we've dealt with it for a long time on the International Space Station and we have a lot of data from the moon from our, our NASA probes that have gone out there and collected so we think we know what we'll encounter. Mm -hmm. Great, okay. And tell me, Reed, how does it feel to be the commander of NASA's first crewed mission going back to the moon Incredible. since Apollo? I am flying with Victor Glover, Christina Cook, and Jeremy Hansen, the three wow. best. Team, yes. I know, so every day that I go into work, I won't say every day is easy, but every day is fun and I'm flying with people that have principles, they have integrity, and they have just so much knowledge and professionalism. It's a dream come true. And getting to work with the whole team, the international team, uh, it's the best. Wow. Well, thank you so much for being here with us, Reed. You know, really quickly, do you have any advice for anybody that might want to follow in your footsteps one day? Uh, we always say that you have to find that job that you love, go all in on it, live your best life. Be as good a professional as you can and someday apply for the program. And we look forward to seeing your application come across our desk. Thank awesome. you, Reed, and good luck on Thank your you. upcoming Thank mission. You. Thank you. Great to be here. Now, if anybody feels like reaching for the stars, NASA is actually currently accepting applications to be an astronaut. You could one day travel to the moon and eventually to Mars. From teachers to scientists to even those in our armed forces, we are looking for a diverse group to take human to humanity farther into the cosmos. You can apply now through April 16th by visiting go.nasa.gov slash astro2024. Now, timing is everything when it comes to pulling off successful science during an event like today. Let's hear from a very special guest who also knows a thing or two about perfect alignments. Hi, I'm Paul DeYoung, shortstop for the Chicago White Sox. What does it take to do my job? You gotta know your physics. 
I specialize in predicting the path of fast moving objects at a split second pace. At my position, it's key to know exactly where and when two paths will cross, just like NASA needs to know when the Earth, Moon, and Sun will align to predict the solar eclipse. Working it all out on the whiteboard is one thing. They're ready for a solar eclipse delay at Volcano Stadium! But seeing it in action is a whole other ballgame. And on April 8th, you can see just what I mean as a total solar eclipse crosses the United States. NASA has mapped the detailed shape of the moon's surface so we know exactly where the moon's shadow will fall. And you know where to be to see the eclipse in person, even if it's from the stands. Don't miss your chance to experience the beauty of science in action and maybe catch a ball game. We are two minutes, about two minutes, under two minutes actually, away from totality here in Kerrville, Texas, which will mark the start of our eclipse coverage across America. Now, folks, we have a little bit of cloud coverage right now in Kerrville, so we are showing the Dallas feed. But again, we're holding out hope. We are. Gina and I are thrilled <laughs> to be here with Dr. Nicola Fox, who is the Associate Administrator of NASA Science Mission Directorate. Nikki, thank you for being here. Oh, I, I wouldn't be anywhere else. Thanks for being here, Nikki. So tell us how the science conducted today will really impact the future of exploration at NASA Science. Oh, wow, there's so much that we're gonna be doing today. Uh, we're gonna be studying the sun. We're gonna be studying the Earth's atmosphere and how that changes. You can see it getting dark. Yes. dark. <laughs> and, um, you know, we've got, we've got these little so magnetometers. They're gonna be all across. We have 30 of them all the way across. Um, I'm gonna hold it up. Very nice. Love magnetometers. Magnetometers, and um, we're gonna we're gonna be having these all the way uh, across the path of totality. And it sounds it like we sounds should like go. We like should get up. Right. Oh my goodness. Let's, let's go. Less than let's a minute. Oh let's my go. goodness. Less than a minute. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay. All right. Glasses is on, Nikki. Uh, yes. Yeah. Or glasses no. on, but we're about to get. Okay, well, okay. Yeah. There's some cloud yeah, there's coverage. Some okay. cloud coverage. Huh? It's trying to peek it out. It is trying. It is trying. It is trying. Windy, it is getting dark sure. here. The wind's picked up. You okay. could actually see the birds started flying in a very weird That's pattern true. a minute ago. Good point. Um, come on, clouds. Everyone's wow. Screaming. Yes. You know, I might have to switch to Team Sun. Come on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We're there. <laughs> We're nearly there. Okay. Here we go. Wow, the crowd wow. is counting, counting down. down. It's so dark. It is so it's dark. So dark. It is so you can dark. see the planes yeah. in the sky you much can. better. Wow. You can. Everybody has planes <laughs> and helicopters and drones. The whole crowd is just... Oh, here we go. go. They're going to clear for that. Oh. Yes. And we have about what four minutes oh, yeah. to four just minutes bask and twenty-five <laughs> seconds to be. Yes, yeah. I mean this really yeah. again mm -hmm. reminds you that we are on this one planet, you know, yes. in this larger system. It's and you have to be on this planet to see what we're seeing. You do. Right That's now. why we are Team Sun, team Earth, sun. and Moon. Because <laughs> with, you need the Moon for an okay. eclipse. You need the Sun for an eclipse. Some right. are standing on the Earth to see it. Oh man. So. All of NASA science represented by a total solar eclipse. And something that, what, over 30 million of us today, at least yeah, in at the least, path of totality, yeah. at least, yes. able I mean, to witness yeah. this. 31 people living mm -hmm. in the path of totality. So Doesn't imagine how many travels. people actually traveled here, yes. Absolutely. Yes. This well, is getting me extra excited about all the science that All the science we're doing, that we're doing, right? yes. Yes. All right, those clouds are playing tricks those on us now. Those clouds are being pretty mean. <laughs> yes. It was nice to get a taste, though. It's wow. true. It yes. is so dark. It is. We've got everybody it is so up. dark. I'm so happy that, you yes. know, for so folks good. that travel, yes. able to see this take place. That's right. 
And it's been such waiting. a great atmosphere here all day. Yes. Every time the sun comes out, everybody Everyone's cheers. Everyone's cheering, yeah. counting down. It has been incredible. And so, wow, that's true. Oh, Nikki, what's your favorite part about these, about an eclipse? Is this, is this your first? No, this is my second one, uh, 2017. Um, I was in Nebraska mm -hmm. and I saw it there. But I think there's just, it's, you can, you can study the sun, you can study the corona, but suddenly you see it with your own eyes. And it's yeah, that feeling yeah. of, of just, wow, that is our star. Like that isn't just, it's just isn't just the sun anymore. That's a star and you see it looking like a star. And, you know, as we study, um, you know, as we look for uh, exoplanets in other mm -hmm. galaxies that might be able to support life, you know, we need to understand our relationship here on this planet with that star. And right. so it's just, it's so important. And I think when you see it, you're just like, wow, it actually is a star. Yes, right. you know, it's not right. just a bright point of light in the sky. You can see the structure. You can see uh, just how exciting the, the sun is and actually how dynamic it is. Yeah. And you know, it's not often in heliophysics that we can actually see the science that we're doing with our own eyes. That is right. So it's that a is rare right. experience. Yes. Or even share in it, you know, yes. millions yes. of Have us so today. many people yeah. partake. Yep. That's right. It's pretty windy too here. It is, it is windy. windy. And so I know earlier in the show we've mentioned that total solar eclipses really might only pass through a certain location, say every 300, what, 75, 75 years? years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you explain how come we don't see eclipses like this every, every day? month? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every month. Um, because the moon's orbit is actually tilted, and so most of the time when it passes in front, we, it doesn't block out mm -hmm. the, the light for us. At this particular time, it is right between, on the plane, between the Earth and the Sun. It is, it is actually at its closest point to the Earth, and so in the plane of the sky, the moon is exactly the same size as the sun, and that is that is very unique. That That's is right. so special, yes. too. I mean, like, what are the odds? It's the 400s, right? <laughs> yes. The, the, the distance between the Earth and the moon is 400 times closer than yes. the Earth and the sun, and the size is 400 times smaller as well. So it just blocks it perfectly. Yep. It does, and right now the clouds are blocking uh -huh. it perfectly. But, I mean, <laughs> yeah. hey, but we got a taste of it, which we is do. very nice, yeah, and we, we are chasing do. this eclipse across North America we today. Are. So excited yeah, to we see are. it from the I other I think it wants to come too. out again. I, I don't do. know. These do. clouds are thinning. Yeah, the clouds You can hear the crowds, the crowds are hearing. Are getting excited. We're hopeful. Yeah. Channeling all that good energy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this crowd has been great all day. Oh, yes. All day. It's crazy to believe, too, that it was so dark and it's only like midday. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And we're starting to get some starting of this. Starting to get the light back. Yeah. Starting yep. to get the light back. Yep. So, unfortunately, we did not see the diamond ring at the end of the eclipse because of the clouds, which is always a crowd pleaser. But we mm, did see true. it actually it right before totality. There was suddenly this beautiful yeah. bright one light and then then it all went dark so um, right. we did actually see uh, quite a few great um great features on the sun and somebody actually was that was saying they could see a sunspot um obviously oh, through their yes, glasses yes. but they could see a sunspot so yeah so, can you clarify what the sunspots are for our viewers yes absolutely so when you when you if you were looking through your glasses you might have seen a couple of dark spots on the sun um, they are actually very intense places. There's very, very intense magnetic field there. They're very active, and that is what can cause um, space weather. So every, every now and again, those active regions can sort of explode and then send billions of tons of solar material towards our planet. Wow. Well, this was fantastic. Thank you so much, Thank Nikki. You, this Nikki. was incredible to experience this with you. Let's follow this clips right up that path. Next up is Dallas. We have Joy and Michael standing by for their big moment in the sun. Yeah, you can feel the temperature change. The wind has completely quieted down. Yep. So the energy here is amazing. So with me right now is Dr. Michael Kirk. He's one of our eclipse experts. Michael, we saw an annual eclipse back in October, yes. but today is a total eclipse. How are you feeling today? It is totally different. I am ecstatic. It, the annual eclipse was really cool. This is, you can feel it, the energy here is electric. If you look around, you can see that the sh the darkness is coming. Um, let's have a yeah. quick look at what we're looking at right now. We're almost there. We're a couple of minutes away. 
Ooh, yep. It's just a crescent left. So let's quickly talk about um, some of the ways that the public are participating in the eclipse right now. Yes. Michael, can you talk about some of the citizen science projects? Yes, there are people all around the country right now making measurements of audio uh, recordings to see how the environment is changing. And it is a great opportunity to do genuine science with just an audio recorder. Fantastic. So we are almost like, um, let's see, a few minutes yeah, away. Just, ooh, so a minute 30 a minute. out, I think, actually. Okay. Um, so let's have a look at the eclipse. Michael, what should we expect to see moments before totality? Okay, so as we approach totality, you're going to see that crescent sun slowly drift away, and then you're going to see the Bailey's beads, where there are these bright points of light that are last bits of sunlight cascading through the moon valleys. And then... Right before totality, you'll see a diamond ring, that last single point of light, and then we'll be in totality. We just have a thumbnail of sun left. It is, we are closing in on totality here. Wow, we see a sliver of the sun left. Remember, you can only take your safety glasses off when the moon has completely covered the sun. And in Dallas, Texas, we are seconds away. Oh my goodness, I can feel my heart racing. You can hear the crowd getting excited. The birds are chirping and they seem like they're going into their nighttime routines. Wow. So we oh. are almost, we are a few seconds away. You can hear the crowds like, cheering. Here we go. Oh my goodness. This is absolutely ecstatic. The oh. darkness is coming over Dallas. Here we are. Just a few seconds Ten left. Ten seconds. Woo. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, we are five seconds away from totality. <laughs> one little bit it's totally dark here deep twilight around here wow you can hear the crowd the last bit of lights and we're in totality Woo! Woo! oh my god oh my god that is absolutely breathtaking oh my god michael <laughs> how are you feeling right now i i am just awestruck i mean the there's a few high clouds but the beauty of the corona is clearly visible can see that spiky structure just poking out um it is heart-stoppingly beautiful oh my goodness i have tears in my eyes i was not expecting this <laughs> this is one of those experiences that you just never forget um i i feel so special to be right here right now experiencing it um and knowing that people literally across the nation are doing the same thing is uh it's truly amazing wow let's take a moment to take it all in. This is absolutely breathtaking. Wow. You can see that spiky structure of the corona. That's indicative of, of, of our approach to solar maximum, that asymmetrical uh, nature the corona has.